Electoral College. Huh. What is it good for? Absolutely not. <clears throat> you like that song. I know you do. Speaking of liking, Elizabeth Warren doesn't like the Electoral College at all. She wants to get rid of it entirely, in fact. Play that clip. My view is that every vote matters. That means get rid of the Electoral College. <laughs> yeah! That was the crowd going wild, because they're mostly Democrats, and Democrats, at least right now, hate the Electoral College. Why? Oh, because of this. This night is turning out to be a real nail-biter. All along, the Trump campaign has been saying that Florida's a must win for them. Absolutely. And, and I mean, it, they it, can't it, win without it. Donald Trump will carry the state of Florida. Uh, there are, I wouldn't call anything encouraging for Hillary Clinton at the moment, to be honest with you, my friend. Hillary Clinton has called Donald Trump to concede the race. That's Hillary Clinton beating Donald Trump by almost 3 million votes, or 2.1% of the total national popular vote. Clinton's 2.9 million vote margin was, not for nothing, the largest winning margin for a losing candidate in the history, history of American elections, which is a very long time. So Clinton's presidential loss, despite getting more actual votes, was the second time in less than two decades that Democrats had been bitten by that particular bug. Back in 2000, Al Gore got around 500,000 more votes than George W. Bush, but lost the White House because Bush's win in Florida gave him the electoral college victory. Show pick of that bug-eyed dude looking through a magnifying glass at hanging Chad. God, such good stage direction, really. I'm a modern day Neil Simon. So, could we be saying sayonara to the Electoral College anytime soon? How the heck do we pick a president by anything other than the old who gets the most votes principle anyway? To answer that question and many more, let me take you back. And I'm gonna take you way back. The scene, the Constitutional Convention, Philadelphia, 1787, sidebar. Really wish we had a powdered wig budget for the show. It would have come in real handy right about now. At issue in the Constitutional Convention was how to fairly distribute the power in electing politicians to Congress. Most free people lived in cities clustered in the North. A simple popular vote, which at the time would have been a vote of only white men, it's worth noting, would give Northern states a stranglehold on legislative power, not to mention in the picking of the leader of the country. That was, you know, just fine with Northern leaders, you'll be surprised to hear. But the South insisted that its slave population, which accounted for roughly 40% of all the people in the region, should be included in the count somehow. The three-fifths clause was born, where enslaved people would be counted as three-fifths of a white male. Yes, it is hugely ironic that Southerners were just fine treating African Americans as their property, but when it came to ensuring they had as much say as they could in national politics, they wanted blacks to count as sort of citizens. <laughs> Put simply, the Electoral College was born of a series of compromises. It was an attempt by our founding fathers, my kingdom for a powdered wig, to navigate not only the issues of fair representation for all states, large and small, but also the battle between free and slave that would, in 75 years time, lead us to the Civil War. The way the Electoral College works is simple. If you want a state's popular vote, you win its electors. The number of congressional seats determined by a state's population, plus two for each of the state's senators. You win a majority of the electors. You, sir, or ma'am, are president. Now, to do that these days, you need 270 of a possible 538 electoral votes. Simple majority. From its inception, the Electoral College has been a divisive subject. Hell, even the guy who's credited with coming up with the original idea, James Madison, later questioned its fairness. Quote, at the present period, the evil is at its maximum. He wrote in 1823 about the then modern practicalities of applying the Electoral College's winner-take-all allocation system. You speak your truth, Jimmy Madison. People call him Jim. According to the National Archives, there have been more than 700 attempts to change or abolish the Electoral College since it was first conceived. In fact, there have been more proposals of constitutional amendments to change the Electoral College than on any other subject. And for decades, large majorities of the public wanted the Electoral College changed too. In 1968, after Richard Nixon won the White House, 80% of people in a Gallup poll favored a constitutional amendment that would allow the president to be picked by simple popular vote. 
Shortly after that 68 election, Indiana Democratic Senator Birch Bayh, which is an amazing name, introduced an amendment to the Constitution that would have jettisoned the Electoral College entirely in favor of a national popular vote. He had 40 Senate co-sponsors for that amendment and Richard Nixon's sort of support, but a block of mostly Southern senators led by Trump Thurmond of South Carolina, you may have heard of him, and Sam Irvin of North Carolina kept the measure from getting the 60 votes it needed to proceed. Which brings us to the here and now. Democrats are, again, pushing the idea of a constitutional amendment to get rid of the Electoral College, arguing that it doesn't reflect the true will of the majority of the public. Republicans are, again, pushing back, arguing that Democrats are just sore losers and that they just want to give big cities all the power and seize it from rural communities. Make sure that the middle of the country was not forgotten. Otherwise, Sandra, people would campaign in New York and LA and that's all they would do. They'd go to the big cities, they'd forget about the, the real people of this country, the rural people in the middle. Quote, the brilliance of the Electoral College is that you must go to many states to win, tweeted none other than President Donald Trump in mid-March. Quote, with a popular vote, you go to just the large states. The cities would end up running the country. Smaller states in the entire Midwest would end up losing all power, and we can't let that happen." And quote. And Trump is likely to get his wish. To amend the Constitution, you not only need the support of two-thirds of the members of the House and Senate, but three-quarters of conventions which would then be called by each state. Which, uh, you know, ain't happening. The Electoral College can't live with it, can't amend the Constitution to get rid of it. That is the point. We post new point episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Make sure to check them all out.